Hi everyone, it's Louise with Louise McKay Art. And uh, I've got something a little crazy here I'm going to share with you guys. Um, but I want to just uh, go over my colors first. I'm going to do coasters again. And I just did a test tile with uh, recycled junk uh, pillow paint. And uh, I was actually really surprised with how what I just tried came out. Um, matter of fact, let me just show you. So I'm going to go over the colors here in a second and also the cell activator. Now, like I said, that was with uh, my really dirty recycled paint, which I don't know if I can use it because it's just too dark. So what I've got here in the lineup, I've got my uh, purple, uh, Dioxazine Purple by Golden, Artist uh, Artez's Pearl Pastel and Prison Pores Fandango. Now you're going to see that these paints are thinner than my normal consistency. This is 24 karat gold by Deco Art. This is rose quartz and paint Prism Pores. Uh, rose quartz by Deco Art and pink dahlia by Prism Pour. This is peach dahlia Prism Pour. This is Artist Loft Metallic Cobalt Blue, and I haven't used this guy in a while. And I love this color. And then, so what I've got there is I've got my new pouring medium again, which is my Glidden, my normal Glidden with the Josanya 3 to 1. So here's my pouring medium that I mix with the paints. So all of these are with the, the Josanya combination. And like I mentioned in one of the earlier videos, um, the Josanya varnish is definitely thinner than Minwax. What I've got to show you is I've got two cell activators, not my normal black. So what I've got here is my American Floatrol cell activator recipe. And it is um, Amsterdam's Ultramarine Violet. And I've got Venetian Rose by Amsterdam. This one's still a little thicker, and which is this one. So I was just shocked at how well they worked out. So what I wanna do is do this test tile and hopefully make a coaster set out of these colors and I'm going to add the black also, black cell activator to this. Because I think the black would make all these colors just pop if it works. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my multi-pro. My normal base color, my base paint, pillow paint. I'm going to put that down first. Layer the colors. Get my cell activator on there and blow it out and see what we get. Okay. I'll get you back in a second. I can't believe that... These other things, uh, colors work as a good cell activator. So we'll see. We'll see if it proves itself out. Stay with me to the next part. So just a reminder, tonight we have our blooming around starting at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'll be up at 7.15. See you there. All right, round number three. And I've decided I want to go back to a little more purple. Because it actually looks really good. That should do it. Okay. And once again, this color, that greenish, is all but disappearing. The gold. Dahlia. And the metallic cobalt blue.
Seal activator. Black. Purple. Venetian rose. All right, everyone, so while my heater kicked on, I'm gonna voice over here. And this is real time, so I'm showing you how the blow works. And I have to apologize. Uh, with this cold and whatever I've got going on with my lips and chapped lips, I just cannot get the blow to go right. So I compensate. But the good news is even with the bad blow, with a good recipe and an understanding of how the cell activator works, it still comes out pretty good. And I always think about when I'm blowing, skimming that cell activator over the paints and having that paint blow out onto the pillow. That to me is the key. So yeah, I'm gonna keep going here. Okay, that was a different blow. So with the heater still on, I just wanna explain here, all I'm doing is spreading and stretching that pillow paint to the edges. So as I get ready to spin, the paint will have a place to flow onto without just rolling over itself, trying to get to the corners. So it doesn't matter how pretty it is, I can just get scrap paint and put it there too. The point is you just wanna have the edges and corners covered so the paint has a place to flow to. So that's all I'm doing here, folks. It's really simple. So for anybody that's new, one of the things I always do is in between spins is clean up. Paint. And I also point out here I have way too much paint to start with because I shouldn't have all that paint sitting on the turntable. But I clean it up so I don't have splatter going all over the place. Now I'm going to pick up the pace here because it's mostly spinning at this point and getting the composition right and I'll chime in when needed. So let me just chime in right here. So what I'm doing here is I'm tilting the paint to the corner that I want to try to spin off the most. So whatever my least desirable corner, I put the weight of the paint there by tilting it and then I use that corner as my starting point for my spin and I'll explain that in a second. So if you notice, since I'm trying to get this corner off, I always have that corner as my point that I'm spinning off of. And I swear by that technique. And I don't ever see anybody else talking about it. Right there, I want it to spread. So I lead off with that, and that push that you give when you release the spinner, gives that extra centrifugal force in that direction. This one's really cool. After all is said and done, and I think I'm gonna stop with that because I don't wanna overspin it. Okay. Not my normal color palette, not, not something I would be going for, but it's pretty cool. Here we go. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and especially the couple tips that I gave. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the like button, comment, and share. I appreciate it. Till next time, take care everybody.